Well, hello, I'm BoxFlyer, and in this video, I'd like to demonstrate doing a BoxFlyer brake service on a K52 bike. This is a 2016 RT, and I have serviced this bike since it was new, and I'm familiar with uh, doing everything on this bike, and this will be the first 12K service. So up to this point, this bike has not had a routine inspection of the brakes or any servicing of the fluids. It's due for that inspection and service. Reference the BMW service schedule. It refers to checking brake pads and brake discs for wear. It's, it can't be overemphasized how that is such a casual statement and there's so much more to do to inspect the brakes for proper performance. And what I try and do is to Make sure that you clean everything very thoroughly. And I do this at a 6,000 mile interval. The other parts of brake fluid replacement are initially after the first year and then every two years thereafter. But the cleaning and inspecting of the brake pads and rotors, I think should be done every oil change interval. This is a crucial part of the operation of your bike and safety is paramount to get your bike stopped when you need to. We're gonna be doing an in-depth cleaning lubricating and then in a complete evacuation of all the fluid in the system to get new brake fluid particularly behind the pistons in the caliper bodies this is the first service on this bike so i'm going to install speed bleeders and the part numbers will be in the description below but for the 1200 or 1250 these are stainless steel versions there are standard steel versions they're about half the price of these but each brake caliper has a different bleeder part number so these parts will be available in the description below and you can order them directly from speed bleeder so the process we're going to do today is to clean everything and inspect the thickness of the rotor the thickness of the pads and then we're going to lubricate all of the moving points as pointed out in previous videos the rear brakes on the BMW, everything starting from the initial hex head all the way to today through the shift head. The rear brake is a fixed rotor and a floating caliper. So the floating pins need a lot of service attention on the rear brakes. Whereas the front brakes on this bike have fixed calipers and floating rotors. So we need to inspect the floating parts of the rotors in the front. So the first thing I'm going to do in anticipation of pushing the pistons back into the calipers is go to the other side where the reservoir is and remove about half the fluid from the reservoir. Eventually, all of the fluid will be removed and will refresh the fluid. But in the process of pushing the pistons in and out to lubricate them, I want to maintain about half of the fluid in the reservoir. I don't want to have it in a normal full state because when I displace the pistons, push the pistons all the way into the bodies of the caliper, all that fluid may overflow the reservoir. So I'm going to remove about half the fluid from the reservoir now before I even start taking this apart. In anticipation of the service that I do on the rear caliper, the fluid that I displace from the caliper body may overflow the reservoir. Especially on the RT as opposed to the GS, this panel that covers the reservoir is only held on by grommets. And when this bike was new, I installed a zip tie that goes around the frame so that if this ever comes out of the grommets, it will never be lost on the side of the road. This is an extra thing that I did on this bike. And I'm just gonna clip it up out of the way so that it'll be easier for us to view me cleaning off the cap for the reservoir removing the cap we notice that it has a maximum fill line and a minimum line and because these brakes are fairly new they only have 12,000 miles on them the fluid level is down barely below the max line if i push the pistons back it would probably overflow the reservoir so as we take off the cap i'm noting if there's any moisture build up in here there are two separate rings Two parts to this cover there's a hard plastic cover and then this is the part that covers the airspace above the fluid to keep the airspace to a minimum which is the airspace has condensation in it 
and it's absorbed into the brake fluid. And in this case, we can see that the brake fluid is pretty yellow. It's already contaminated with moisture. And this is what we're trying to clean out of the whole system from the reservoir, through the ABS pump, through the lines, and especially the fluid that's behind the pistons and the caliper. That's the fluid that is contaminated with moisture and will most likely be the area where the brake fluid would boil if you have an emergency braking event and put a lot of braking energy into the brake pads and it goes to the calipers. And in the next braking event, you could have a bubble in your brake fluid and that compressibility of a bubble causes a loss of effectiveness of your brake pads, of your brakes altogether. I'm gonna extract some of the fluid, not all of the fluid, because I need to be able to use the brake pedal to work the fluid to push the pistons back and forth. So I'm just gonna extract a little bit of the fluid down to about the minimum level. And then, and I can see here something else. You see this white debris that was sucked up out of the bottom? That is a function of having water has become solid particles. It has condensed, and this may be just debris in the brake fluid because of moisture. So this is a really good example of having something has damaged the brake fluid. And here you can see it sucked up into the hose that I'm gonna get rid of all of this. This would stay in your brake system and cause real damage, real problems. Look in the bottom of this jar, you can see the, the stuff that was sucked out of the reservoir. We're gonna get this all cleaned out. This is very typical of a bike that has a couple of years on the brake fluid. It's imperative that you replace the brake fluid in the entire system, not just replace the fluid in the reservoir and pump it through to the, the bleeder. I'll show you in a minute the components on the caliper as to how close the bleed nipple is to the supply line. And if you don't do some extra steps to get the fluid away from the back of the pistons and the caliper, the fluid will go through the lines and right out the bleeder and never replace the fluid that's back trapped in the caliper body itself. As an example for this procedure we're gonna do on the bike, I've got a couple of demonstration parts here. This is a rotor from one of these bikes. It has some wear on it and this has met the reject criteria for too thin. The dimension for minimum thickness is stamped right on the rotor itself. So you need to turn your wheel around and find the spot where this is engraved on the rotor and measure your rotor with a micrometer to determine across. You measure outside and inside track to determine if you have a suitably thick rotor to continue using it. If not, you need to get a replacement disc and refresh this surface. Likewise, this is a caliper, a used caliper. I took this off of a bike that I owned. I rejected this caliper because it had worn pins. The pin, since this is a floating caliper, the pin on the body of the caliper goes into the backing bracket that holds it to the final drive. This pin rubs on aluminum alloy without any protection other than the lubricant. The, bo the back pin is an alignment pin and this pin rubs on rubber. It's just an alignment and it doesn't show as much wear. But when this pin up here wears the aluminum alloy of this backing bracket, it causes this to cant off and get in a bind and it doesn't slide freely. It impairs the ability to grip the brakes, but worse yet, it impairs the ability for the caliper to retract and float to get a neutral position so the pads don't drag. You end up with a dragging brake that wears the pads, wears the rotors, and creates the heat that would cause the brake fluid to boil in the caliper body. So this is a reject caliper, and I'm gonna show you quickly how this is put together. It has a couple of safety pins. This is the pin that holds the brakes into the body. I'm just gonna tear this apart really quickly. These pads are different thicknesses originally from the factory. The grooves that are in here are the wear grooves that indicate when they are at minimum thickness for reject. What we're gonna be working on here is we'll take the backing plate off of, we'll separate it from 
the caliper body and this one's already kind of stuck on here it just it's binding up you release the boot from the pin there's an annular groove there and there's a little annular groove on this pin that these two dust boots are riding in and when this separates we can see that this has lots of shiny spots that indicate wear and that wear on the steel pin is indication that the wear that must have occurred in the aluminum alloy part of this is much worse. And in this case, it's causing this one to bind up. It does not slide freely when it's put together. There are three little flat areas on these pins that I call the grease reservoirs. And that's the only place that extra grease can reside along this pin. You can see how shiny this is here on this part. That's where it's binding up in this backing plate. When we take this off, this is a lubricate point. These are lubrication points where the thrust surface of the brake pads push against. These push up here when the brake effort takes place. They push and we're going to lubricate that and these little spots on the front of the brake pads. But more importantly, we're also going to push these pistons out and clean the brake seals that are in here. Real quickly here, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate what happens if I'm going to use some air pressure, which would simulate the effort from the brake fluid if you were going to pump the brakes and you pumped them out too far. So I'm going to put a spacer pad in here to push this out take out a little bit at a time so I can push these pads out. The pads are coming out farther and farther each time. I don't want them to explode out. But here's a piston that has now come all the way out of the body. If this happens to you, if the, the piston comes out because you pumped it too far, you can still Put this back in there's a lot of hydraulic fluid the brake fluid will all come out of here it'll make a mess you can clean this up and put it back together the components that we're trying to work with here when we get into doing the process is cleaning off the body of the piston of the caliper this is a hard anodized aluminum piston while this is out it's a good chance for me to show you the two parts of the seals the o-rings that are in here this is a throwaway body this seal is the dirt scraper ring and you can see it has a small chevron a small notch for cleaning and scraping the sides of the pistons as they move in and out it's the first one that you come to the second ring is a big square cut ring it is the one that holds the pressure in the brake system see the two grooves cut inside the caliper body. The rear caliper is a one-piece unit. This ring just slides back into the groove cut inside here. You wouldn't normally take it apart to this level. This is not necessary at all, not needed, and never required. But I just wanted to show you the components that go into the caliper body what we're trying to clean. We're trying to clean the piston so that it doesn't push crud from the sides of the piston into the caliper and contaminate or cause the brakes to not even slide properly. As I put this back in, we'll now be able to show how if you push the piston out by accident, by pumping the foot pedal, you can you have plenty of clearance to get this piston lined up and you can line it up and it will go right back into the caliper body and there it is it's all installed everything is back to normal for our process now we've talked about some of the bike components i want to talk about tools required to do this job some of the things that uh, i have that would facilitate you doing what you need to do obviously you need some of the basics of some hand wrenches. Taking the bolts out that hold the caliper 
bracket to the final drive. These are on with Loctite from the factory, so they're a little bit stiff coming out all the way. They're a little difficult. I use a speed driver to remove some things, especially body panels on the front. One of the critical items that I use is this shoelace. It's an old boot lace. I have no idea how many times this has been used. Actually, the dirt that gets impregnated into this helps clean the sides of the pistons as I use the shoelace, the shoe shine method to polish the pistons in the caliper. When you assemble the bike, you need to put the components back together with a torque wrench. The torque values that we mentioned for doing this bike are specific to this bike. So if you apply the techniques of cleaning, lubricating, and then replacing the fluid, that three-step process in that order for your bike, just remember that the torque values that you use on your bike need to be looked up and specific for your bike. Another thing that I use, these are shims for installing cabinetry and I use these to install between the caliper pistons and the body of the caliper to prevent the pistons from coming all the way out uh, when I'm pumping the brakes to get the pistons out so that I can clean them and once I clean them then you lubricate with a brake caliper lube and it's something that is available there is a large quantity it's about a pint that's available from Amazon. There'll be a link in the description below. All of the contact points and everything were metal, slides on metal. I use ceramic. It's high temperature, up to 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. When I do put bolts back together, I use blue Loctite on these bolts in the back. I don't put any Loctite on the bolts in the front. And I, the bleeders, the speed bleeder on the back needs an 11 millimeter and the speed bleeder bag that I use for cleaning it. When you are going to install new fluid, you need to realize that uh, BMW changed the specification for the brake fluid on all of the bikes. Everything back from oil heads to current day, they changed the specif specification for the brake fluid to DOT4 LV. Starting with some of these newer generation bikes, not only did they have, have the ABS brakes that require rapid response, but now we have traction control, we have bank angle traction control, and there are a lot of interactions with the power delivery of the engine to the braking systems. And the, the rate at which commands are given electronically need to be response times reduced for mechanical applications of brakes to facilitate traction control. So the LV, the low viscosity brake fluid, is absolutely essential now to have these components respond at the rate of which the electronics command input to these devices. We've reviewed some of the components on the bike, demonstrated the areas of interest that we're gonna pay attention to. And so now we're actually gonna take this bike apart and perform the procedure. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the brake pads out of this one. There are two safety pins that hold the crossbar in and they need to go back, obviously. Well, this pushes through toward the spokes and you have to push up on the pads themselves against the anti-rattle spring a little bit and remove this pin. And then the pads will um, drop down a little bit. We'll be able to slide the pads out. That's the inner pad and I'm looking, I'm going to just set it down. There's no way to mix up which is the inner pad or the outer pad on this bike. They only go in one way. Now the first thing I'm going to inspect is the cleanliness of these wear indicator grooves that are in here. And they don't have any materials stuck in there. Sand, road debris gets stuck in these. What's stuck in these grooves acts as a lapping compound that wears the face of your rotors down. Likewise, the road debris and other crap that gets into these lightning holes, they lighten the rotor. The material that's in here is lapping compound for the face of the pads. And these are, both need to be cleaned up. Um, and we'll, what we use for cleaning the holes in the rotor 
or some kind of a bore brush. I put it in a drill and just spin it through and you can see the dust and crap that comes out of the holes. And so you just put this on a drill and run it through each one of these holes quickly to clean out the holes in your rotor and get a uh, wire brush and brush out the edges around the edges of your braking pad material and in the grooves of the pads themselves. The wear parameter we know is down to the bottom of these grooves, so these have plenty of life left in them. We're gonna look at checking the ability of these pins to float on the backing bracket that's mounted firmly to the final drive body, but we need to make sure that this floats on here very smoothly. We're gonna install this so that when it's cleaned up, it's all gonna float freely. Now, these, like I said, are installed with blue thread locker and they are a little more difficult. They don't just spin out freely. The brake line also has a little plastic clip that holds the speed sensor lead that goes around to the other side of the rotor. So we take out these bolts and because they had Loctite on them before, I'm going to put Loctite on them again and I want to make sure that it's cleaned off. One of the things that I do um, that's a little bit above and beyond and uh, expert technique, this blue Loctite builds up and is it's easy to clean off. I have a, a die and a tap that I run through these threads. This is an M8 by 1.25 thread and I just run it through a tap and a die to clean the threads of the old blue Loctite. Doesn't take much. You're not cutting the steel on the bolts. The fasteners don't have any degraded strength, but it cleans up the surface so that you get a, a true torque value when you put these in. The front brake bolts that hold the caliper to the fork legs don't have any Loctite on them, so I don't really need to do this on the front brake bolt. But just a simple chase of a tap and a die will clean up these threads so that when I apply new Loctite, the, the torque reading will be accurate. So this is gonna come up. I need a, a small bungee. I put a small bungee around some component of the chassis of the bike and <clears throat> hold this up out of the way for now. When it comes to measuring the rotor, you need to measure it in a couple of places, both on the exterior perimeter and the interior uh, thickness of it. So go all the way in here to the inner part of it and measure the thickness. And you can see that it's well within the specification of the minimum of 4.5. We measured in a couple of places and you can see the value is good on the thickness of the rotor. Now I'm going to separate the caliper from the backing plate and examine these pins. So as I start to separate this, I see I've got to pull the dust boot off of the annular ring, get it to snap loose there, and the part that's the part up here on the front that's the real thrust pin, it has a small annular ring. As the bellows pulls out, I just got to pop this off of the ring to get the boot to slide off. And then we'll separate these two halves. And I'm looking for wear on the thrust plate. The brake pads themselves push against this surface right here. And that needs to be lubricated and cleaned. Likewise, these pins need to be cleaned and we'll inspect them for wear. The black finished surface that's on here shows almost no wear at all. And this boot can be removed. And I'll use a Q-tip to come in here and clean off all of the old oil grease crap from inside the caliper housing. And then I'm gonna use a flashlight to look down inside here and see that there's no wear on the actual 
casting. There's a little piece of lint that I left in there from a Q-tip, but you have to inspect that the inside of this casting, this alloy part is good. And then on the caliper itself, we're looking at the pin, the thrust pin, and this is already starting to show a little bit of wear. The black finish is missing, but the this is there's three exact same flats flats on the side of this pin, and you can see that it's parallel all the way. This has not lost any material. The tapered pin, the tapered flat, would indicate that this is thinner on the outside and would be binding. So we can see that. It's got a little bit of wear starting on it. You can see up inside that spot that there's some shiny, but this just needs to be lubricated very well, cleaned off of any um, dust or debris that gets in here. And then I'll lubricate it with the ceramic. Before I put anything back together, I'm gonna start cleaning the sides of the pistons of the caliper itself. We already removed some of the fluid out of the reservoir. And at this point, um, I'm gonna pump the brakes. I'm just gonna reach underneath and find the brake pedal and pump a little bit to pump these pistons out some. And once they're pumped out some, I get a new surface. There's a new exposed surface of the piston that I wanna have about the width of a shoelace so that I can clean the So I just pump it out to where I get about the width of the shoelace to go around the piston on the body. And I'm just going to, I slide this back and forth on the piston from all directions. So now I'm cleaning off the backside of this one. I'm going to clean off the backside of this one. And then usually helps to have somebody with an extra hand, hold it so that you can do the shoe shine method to get all the areas of this piston cleaned off. And you wanna be able to get the front, the back, the full area around these pistons cleaned off. The pistons being clean are absolutely important, imperative, before you start lubricating and pushing the pistons back into the caliper body. If you have dirty pistons, even if you were just gonna replace the pads and you know that you have to increase the clearance between the, the faces of the caliper backing bracket and the pistons, if you push the pistons back into there without it cleaning this, you're gonna introduce a lot of debris and crap into the, the seals. So here, now that we've got it cleaned off, I'm gonna put on some of this brake lube this uh, brake caliper lube. And I just have a little eyedropper full of this. And all I'm gonna do is just put it around the edge, completely around the circumference of these pistons and just get a small amount around the whole area of this piston. Once it's, I got a little reservoir, a little dab of that around there, I'm gonna take a Q-tip and work it well around, all the way into the back. Make sure that I've got fluid touching every part of the circumference of this piston, because now I wanna start pushing this, these pistons in to make sure that they freely slide in the caliper body. And so I'm getting it to where the pistons will slide in freely, and they are so free to move in and out that when one goes in, it has enough pressure to push the other one out. So I'll reach over here again and get a hold of the foot brake and just pump. If one starts to come out and you, you can hold it with your fingers and you just pump them, pump it out a little bit. And we'll just push the piston in and push the piston in and they are moving with fingertip pressure. That's all it takes to move these pistons. And the goal here is to get them so that they work themselves, they can work back and forth so easily that under normal operations, the very slight irregularities of the rotor will push these pads with the, push the pistons 
and the pad surface away from the rotors. And I'm now that I've got it to where it's working smoothly, I wipe off all the extra brake lubricant, the caliper piston lubricant. Don't want to leave too much on there because it will attract dirt. But also, don't spray it off with your brake cleaner at this point. You want to leave the lubricant film on the sides of the pistons. But now we have the pistons are completely pushed into the caliper body and they have displaced all of the fluid from the back side of the caliper body. If we had not done something like that and we just put in new brake fluid in the reservoir and push the brake fluid through the line, it would come through the banjo fitting and right out the bleeder. So if you bleed brakes to replace the fluid, but don't evacuate the back sides of the pistons on the caliper body, you leave this area of the brake calipers full of the old contaminated brake fluid. So that's the point of cleaning, inspecting, lubricating before you introduce new brake fluid to have the body of the caliper completely full of new fluid that doesn't have the tendency to boil or bubble. Once you've inspected and cleaned off the pins, the sliding pins that take all the load on the caliper, you clean off the pin on the backing plate and the other area on the backing plate is the thrust surface. We need to clean this off because we're going to add new ceramic to this thrust surface. You've already cleaned off inside there with a Q-tip. Now we need to clean off the area inside the rubber guide pin side. This needs to be cleaned. Remove all the old grease out of there. And one more area that needs inspection is the anti-rattle spring. And sometimes it's not intended for this to be removed, but it's got a little clip on it that holds it here to the back of the caliper. And as you pivot this out, this can fall out or be completely removed, but you just can clean off the area behind it, clean off its rub points where it's going to rub and put a little bit of lubricant on them when you put it back together. This spring clip fits right over the edge of the caliper body, fits right into place. And now I'm going to start adding the lubricant and I put the ceramic uh, inside the pockets. If you put it on the pins, when the pin is slid past the accordion boots, the ro little rubber dust boots, it wipes off all of the grease so it doesn't remain in the area where you'd like it to stay. So I apply the grease to the inside of the receptacle, not on the pins themselves. So there's the one that's on the caliper body and likewise a little bit more will go in the backing bracket. This The grease goes in here just a, a nice film in there. There's also going to be a film on this thrust plate, the stainless steel plate that's the thrust plate for the end of the pads go. And I'm going to add a little touch to where the anti-rattle spring is up here at the top and up here on the back. So those, all those contact points, likewise, the area on the pads going to get a little bit of lubricant on this thrust point, on the anti-rattle point, and in the pivot. The cross slide needs to be lubricated so that it will also slide smoothly. This is a good time to clean off the pin while you're lubricating and cleaning everything. Clean the cross pin and inspect it. Make sure that it's already starting to show some wear where the brake pads uh, have contact. Because these holes that hold the spring clips hold these holes, it will wear 180 degrees out. So right now it's wearing on that part. When I put this back in, it actually comes in from the spoke side of the wheel. I can rotate it 180 degrees and distribute the wear to the opposite side of the pins. This is showing wear from where it touches on the housing of the caliper 
And this part shows where, where it touches on the inside of the brake pads. So I'm gonna rotate it when I put it together 180 degrees out to distribute the wear so I don't get a long-term wear pattern there. Now that everything is lubricated, I can start putting it back together. And as this gets built up, I'm gonna go over to the reservoir and completely evacuate the fluid, but I'll build this up and wedge the pads so that the pistons will stay completely buried into the caliper body so that as I start to bleed the brake fluid, the fluid will evacuate through from the reservoir, through the ABS module, through the lines, out the bleeder screw before I introduce any of that fluid back into the area behind the pistons. So we'll get all fresh fluid throughout the whole lines. Then when I remove the shims from between the pads and the rotor, the next fluid that enters the chambers will all be brand new fluid. We won't start off with adding contaminated fluid from the lines to the back sides of the piston. Now I'm gonna install the lubricated, I need to put this boot back in, the little annular ring goes inside the housing. It just fits into its groove and make sure that it's shaped right. And this slides, these two pins have to start as simultaneous as they can be. They have to go in together. And so I'm going to put a little more brake, a little more of the ceramic on the pin. There's not enough on the pin. I'm going to put a little bit on here so that the lubricant gets in those three flats. That's the area that the grease will be held in. This, don't want to put on too, too much because it's just going to get wiped off. Put some on this one too. Even though this one rides in rubber, it doesn't take the thrust of the brake application. It's the guide pin. It keeps the caliper aligned. So now these two slide in together. And as we see, as we put this in and slide it together, all of the grease, the extra grease gets wiped off by that boot there. So before I bury that all the way closed, I'm going to wipe off some of the excess grease. Otherwise, we'll just have a big mess. I just want to have sufficient lubrication and it pops over the annular ring. The boot now is sealed on both sides and we wipe off of the excess. Don't want to have a lot of dirt gathering grease on these parts. And I'm just going to hang the rotor, the caliper, on the housing for the final drive. Once it's hanging there, I need to add a drop of blue Loctite to each one of these bolts. It takes very little, just a little bit on each one. And for this bike, when I reference putting this all together on the box flyer boards that I have, and there'll be a link to this in the description below, this not only holds, shows you where all of the body panel screws go, but it has a torque sheet reference to the torque sheet over here. And so I've got here bevel gears and final drive section. Brake caliper on rear bevel drive is 24 Newton meters for the screws that hold the brake caliper to the final drive and medium thread locker. So there's a link to this torque sheet and a link to the box flyer board in the description below. Now there's a little stainless steel holder for the speed sensor line. Make sure that it gets captured behind the bolt when this starts in. I always start these bolts by hand. I don't want to get anything cross-threaded. You have to line up several parts of this to get it to work right. This runs in nice and smooth now because we already took the time to clean the threads of the old Loctite and that allows us to thread this in by hand. If it had the old Loctite on there, you'd have to run this in with a ratchet or a speed driver all the way. Torque value for this was 24. We just looked it up.
so it's torqued properly and now that the pads have already been lubricated the way that I install the pads is I start with the back one and this is a demonstration of how well this is lubricated this slides back and forth with just a finger and the pins this is the way the caliper is supposed to be free floating to install the pad I just push it flat against the face of the rotor the back face push this out so there's plenty of room back there and I just slide it up forward and you watch that little ramp the little lip can you see right up in here where that pad is starting to show if it sticks up there it's missed the mark it has to go down and it sits on that little shelf the little lip of stainless steel thrust surface area and once it's in receded in there you pull the caliper back and it holds the pad completely against the disc and while the space now there's space on this side we take the front pad put it against the face of the rotor just rotate it around up that space that's in there and you can see down over here you can see the space where the little shelf is where I need to align the pad going in there and when the pad, the pad goes in place it's sitting securely on that little shelf so this has to sit all the way up in there for the pin which we've now lubricated the pin the pin can slide into place so it was in this orientation where the steel pads were wearing on it so I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees and put it in you have to kind of push up the pads against the anti rattle springs and it captures both of them at once comes through both of them and you have to push the pad up against the anti rattle spring and then this will slide into the housing all the way. These spring clips go into a hole and once you get this outside one in, you can rotate this around. The other one has to be installed almost vertical, matching this one. There. And you can see that they're limited as to how far they can rotate. So there's a machine flat area on the inside there that has that line up just right. Now's the time I want to put some shims between the backside to hold the pistons all the way buried into place. So I'm going to put in a shim. It can take two shims of these to wedge the caliper. So I've wedged the caliper tight against the pistons. No, so when I start to bleed the brakes, the fluid will come through and right out the bleeder until I get all new fluid in the lines. And then I'll remove the shims and let brand new fluid get into the piston area behind the caliper. Now I'm back over to the reservoir side of the bike for the rear brake. And anytime you're working with the reservoir, it's a good idea to put some towels to catch any drips anything that comes out of the reservoir. As you can see, we had um, sucked out the excess fluid out of the reservoir before, and now that the pistons are all the way into the caliper, they've displaced fluid, and it's up almost to the full mark again, to the max. So now I'm gonna evacuate all of the fluid out of here I can extract and, and see we're getting more of that white debris out of here. As you can see, there's more debris and residue, and I'm getting down in here with a Q-tip to extract every little bit of this crud that's in the bottom of this reservoir. It will make its way into the ABS pump, and it just every bit of this has got to be cleaned out. This takes a lot of effort. It's attention to detail that makes this job work right. You can't do this quickly. It really helps to have it up on a lift and um, you have to inspect this very closely. This is not unusual for a bike with any age on it at all to have these symptoms of 
moisture accumulation, and deteriorated fluid. Cleaning out this uh, lid bellows, cleaning off all the moisture that can accumulate on it. And there's the second ring that helps keep it square in the top of the reservoir. Just has to, you take time cleaning all this stuff out. And once again, we're gonna use dot four LV as the fluid. We're gonna replace the fluid now. And since the piston of the caliper is pushed all the way back in, and the first thing we're gonna do is um, push the fluid through all the lines in the ABS pump, we're gonna fill past the max mark. It doesn't really matter that it's um, past the max mark. So I've got it max, and when I replace the nipple for the bleeder, this fluid may start to go down. So I didn't wanna introduce any of that dirty hydraulic fluid, brake fluid, into the system. When I open the system, brake fluid will start to introduce into the brake line. So I didn't open up and change the bleeder before I completely cleaned this up and not any introduction of brake fluid into the system will all be brand new clean fluid at this point. Back on this side, now that the reservoir is full of brand new clean dot 4 lv fluid, I'm going to open up the system and put in a new brake bleeder, speed bleeder. These come with a small amount of thread sealant on them. I add a little bit of extra PTFE thread paste to the threads on this just to ensure there is no leakage at all on these threads. It's just a small amount and I don't get it near the sealing hole. I just put a very small amount on the threads to add to what's installed from Speed Bleeder. I get this all set up with this sealant on here in advance because as soon as I start opening up the system, I want to get this new one installed as quickly as possible. This takes an 11 millimeter wrench to remove the old speed bleeder and I've already checked that 11 millimeters fits this one. So I'm ready. I've got everything set up so that I have minimum amount of time that this system is going to be open and possibly just running fluid around. So I put some extra rags in here that will catch whatever fluid starts leaking out of the where the speed bleeder is going to go in. So loosen this up, run this out as quickly as I can. I know there's going to be some fluid running out. and put the new one in, get it started, and run it all the way in. Okay, once it's snugged up, um, I'm gonna add the speed bleeder bag. And the way I like to run the speed bleeder is the first place I want it to go is slightly uphill. So I have the little bungee that I hook to someplace on the bike and I run the hose for the speed bleeder uphill out of the nipple. The first place the fluid goes is uphill and I can see bubbles flow up. If it's going down, sometimes the bubbles will start retracting going uphill into the nipple. So I'm going to wipe off everything, clean off where the brake fluid ran down a little bit when I swapped out the bleeder. Now I'm going to open this up just a quarter of a turn and I'm going to start pulling on the brake pedal. I can reach underneath the bike and as I start exerting force, bubbles already came out and the fluid is all yellow and old. That's the fluid that was in the reservoir to start with and as we push all this old fluid out, we're waiting for it to become clear like water, the color of the new fluid we just put in the reservoir. And I did about five pumps 
that's enough. I got to stop and go back and inspect the reservoir to see that I haven't emptied the reservoir out. And as I come back over here, it's just below the max line. Well, I need to keep an eye on the reservoir. I can keep an eye on the line from this side on the foot pedal pump side. It's I need to keep an eye on the reservoir and the line simultaneously. So when the line starts to run clean and I haven't run out of the reservoir, it's still not running clean and I'm getting low at the reservoir. So I'm going to top up the reservoir before I run it dry and introduce air bubbles from this side. Top it up and pump some more and I'm watching the color of the fluid. and it's starting to run clean. It's brand new clear fluid now. So I'm about halfway in the reservoir. The reservoir is halfway between max and min, and this fluid is now completely clear. So I close the bleeder, and I'm gonna remove the speed bleeder line. I put it downhill now, so I don't have the fluid that's in the hose running out. Now I'm going to remove the shims that have been holding the pistons back out of place. And as now the pistons will start to move and fill up the area behind the caliper pistons with brand new fluid. All of the fluid in the lines have been replaced with new fluid. And I'm going to pump the foot pedal to where the pistons pump out and I get a good firm pedal. Watching the reservoir doesn't go too low. And I'm getting a, a good firm pedal right now. And the brake reservoir is at the min mark. Knowing that the brake pads are probably worn about a quarter of their life is worn, I am not going to fill this up to max. If I had brand new pads, if I'd replaced the pads with brand new pads, I'd fill the reservoir to max. But because the, fluid, the pads are worn one quarter, I'm only going to fill this up to three quarters. So this is not quite to the max line. I fill the reservoir commensurate with the amount of pad that is available. So when you have brand new pads, you fill the reservoir to max. If you're going to push those pads back any, you still have some there, there's still some room. If the pads are worn out halfway, you fill this up about halfway. Now we're going to put the cleaned rubber bellows in here. This displaces all of the airspace, as much airspace as possible, from the top of the surface of the reservoir. It's more important to have the space in the reservoir, in my opinion, than to worry about introduction of air. Air will get in here, it has to get in here to fill up that space. Then the shaping ring that holds that from collapsing into the reservoir and then the cleaned off cap will go on and this just needs to be snugged up. There's no torque value and that's complete. Everything is complete on the rear brake now and we've got a really firm pedal there's no air in the system, whatever, and the rear brake is completely serviced. Now that we've got the reservoir topped off, the only other thing I need to do is put on the dust cap on the speed bleeder. The one that they provide is just fine. I'm going to go back and review all my work for QA. The clip for the speed sensor is on. Those bolts were torqued. This is tightened up. The cotter pins are in. Do your own quality assurance. Anytime you do work on the brakes, especially, go back over your work, verify that everything you've worked on, touched, opened up, moved, cleaned, is back in its correct position with correct values for torque. Um, once again, to recap, we're gonna clean everything, measure for specifications, ensure that all the parts and pieces are correct for putting back together, then we're going to lubricate everything that has contact points, whether it's the sides of the pistons, the sliding pins for the brake pads or the caliper to the backing plate. And then we're going to lubricate everything and 
put things back together so that they slide and move freely. Then we're going to evacuate all the fluid, push the fluid out of the back of the pistons, and get ready to wedge the pistons closed, buried into the caliper body. Replace all the fluid in the lines out through a new speed bleeder in this case. Then we'll introduce new fluid to the back, the back of the pistons and the whole system in the rear of the bike from the reservoir through the caliper body has new fluid in it and ready to go for another 6,000 mile interval to look for cleanliness and 12,000 miles or two years in my estimation. Every two years you need to change the fluid out completely. Once this is all complete, this is the complete rear brake service for this K52 model of the R1200 RT.